Hi guys. Hi, it's Loz. I thought I'd jump back on because I told everyone I would. I've had something to eat. I've been to the loo. I put my washing on. <laughs> I've had a bit of a rest. I needed to rejuvenate myself for a second because I've been talking for three hours. That last live was three hours long. Holy shit. This live is some serious business. I can't believe how long I'm going live for, how many questions everyone's got. <laughs> I thought when I first went live it would be like 20 minutes and three hours later I'm still here. Hi guys, so are you still awake, you people in the US? It's 10.30 in uh, the East Coast. And what time is it in LA? Something? I'm in Perth. If you're in Sydney it's probably like 1 o'clock or something in the daytime. In New Zealand, I have no idea what time it is. If you're in Asia, I have not a clue. And anywhere else in the world, I have no idea. I'm just going off US and Australia time. But guys, please join me for your questions. Do you have any manifestation questions? Excuse me eating my lunch. But I thought I'd jump on before everyone in the US went to bed. Because I know it's Valentine's Day. And a lot of you will be feeling a bit down. A bit of a downer. Today of all days. Especially in the US, because it's a big deal over there. In Australia, not so much. But, you know, it makes you feel shitty when it's a big holiday day and about love and connection and things and your person hasn't contacted you it makes you feel like shit sometimes hi Rhiannon hi guys I'm just talking about doing a Valentine's Day live Q&A so if you guys have any questions drunk wombat what a great name you must be in Australia um so excuse me eating my lunch guys my last live went for three hours and I didn't get to eat any breakfast so guys I'm just jumping on for twice normally I just do one live in the morning but I just thought I'd do two today because I know it's Valentine's Day and a lot of people might be struggling the SP or the specific person or the ex or their friend or whatever hasn't you know been in touch and it's hard guys do you have any questions if you have any questions for me about manifestation please ask me because I came onto TikTok just to talk about manifestation and put on some affirmation um, videos. I've got those with lovely music, soothing music in the background. That was the purpose of my account when I joined two weeks ago. But suddenly I realized all these people are asking me questions. And I thought, oh, I might just start answering questions in the videos. And now <laughs> I've got so many <laughs> questions I have to answer. Please don't DM me. Please just write them here in the live or in the comments. I can't answer DMs unless it's about coaching. But so people have asked me for coaching now, and now I'm doing coaching. But so if you have coaching questions, go to my DMs. But just post the questions here in the live or in the um, actual posts themselves, and I will answer them with a video. So my, um, I guess, manifesting journey started with, like everyone else, with The Secret. Even though before that I was manifesting stuff consciously, but didn't realize I was doing it by using I am, I am this, I am that. Found The Secret, got fucking confused, thought, what is this bullshit, doesn't make sense. This isn't working for me, why not? Went through every LOA teacher and every self-help book I could find and finally found Neville Goddard. Neville Goddard teaches the law of assumption, or at least that's what he called it. Wait, you said there's no such thing as divine timing, right? Um, no, there's no such thing. It's just you um, I would call it its own appointed hour. I wouldn't I wouldn't what the problem with saying divine timing is assuming something outside of you is deciding the timing, okay? I wouldn't think that way. I think you're divine. You are all gods. Therefore, you decide the timing, okay, in your own mind. It, how long it takes you to convince yourself and live in the end is how long it takes. When you've fully saturated your mind, when you've fully convinced yourself that it is real and it is done, the timing speeds up. You really decide the timing, okay? But... I would call it its own appointed hour. It will ripen, it will flower. Wait. If it be long, wait. It'll be sure and it will not be late. That's what Neville says. It's in the Bible. The vision, the vision you've had, has its own appointed hour. It is sure. It will, it will ripen and it will flower. If it be long, wait. For it is sure, it is certain, and it will not be late. If you have the vision, hold on to the vision. It is sure, it is certain, and it will not be late. It will come in its own timing. So yes, you can call it divine timing, but I wouldn't put that out as like the universe is deciding for me. I think that's a very flawed way of thinking, and I think that's very powerless. It's not very empowering to think something's deciding. Okay? So, guys, when I'm talking about Neville and um, Law of Assumption, what I'm talking about is 
kind of different than law of attraction. If you've come from a law of attraction background, you might be a bit confused what I'm talking about. But all I'm saying is what I've learned, and that is your thoughts create. Your dominant thoughts create your reality. Your subconscious dominant thinking out pictures into your outside reality, and that creates your reality. Not the universe, not something outside of you, not the fucking vortex. It's just you. And if you don't believe me, look at your life thus far. Look what's in front of you right now and realize that you created that with your thinking. Even your negative thinking. Everything you're thinking dominantly creates your reality. Everything. Okay? So you create all day long. You manifest all day long. It's not something you just do when you're feeling positive. That's a load of utter, complete bullshit. And people who are showing you emotion meters and telling you you have to be happy don't have a fucking clue what they're talking about because I manifest shit all day long. Angry, frustrated, annoyed, sad. How come I'm doing that without the happiness meter? Oh, I know why. Because your dominant thoughts create. There are a whole lot of people in here talking about a whole lot of shit that I understand. And if you question them about how come thoughts create feelings, so what do I need feelings for? All I need is a thought. They won't be able to answer you because they don't. They're peddling the shit about feelings, but they can't explain to you why you don't need feelings. What helped you move on to the past in order to manifest? Realizing that I create the past. I created that past. Holy shit. All that shit that happened to me, I created that with my thinking. What the fuck was I thinking all that shit for? It just manifested. Guess what? I can change it. That made me feel a hell of a lot better. Guys, it's a real revelation when you realize that what you've been thinking manifested. All your negative thoughts manifested. It's really, it's fucked up when you start realizing how many fucked up thoughts you have, how many negative thoughts you have all day. When you start realizing what you've been thinking your whole life, those perpetual, negative, repetitive thoughts that have been sitting there since childhood, when you start realizing... It's really, it's scary because you go, fuck, I wish I hadn't thought all that stuff. But you can't help yourself. It's your subconscious mind. It's been there since you were a child. Do I have a money manifestation video? Have people asked me about money yet? I think I do have one coming up about manifesting money. But I would say this. You have to get into a wealth mindset, okay? You have to be in the state of being wealthy. You have to be in the state of having money. You can't be in a broke-ass mindset and get money. Your state of being dictates your manifestations. Whoever you think and feel you are, manifests outside of you okay so wealthy people constantly assume they are wealthy they don't think at any time that they're broke even people like donald trump and people who've lost millions of dollars still think they're wealthy even when they've lost the millions they think it'll come back because they've got a wealth mindset so step into that mindset walk around shops and think i can afford this i can afford that Listen to the money tree song. Ching, ching, ching goes a money tree. It's affirmations about money. Put in ching, ching, ching goes a money tree into Google and you'll see it. And there's also the guy who gets out of his boot and he goes, where the money resides, where the money resides. It's this amazing um, clip from a guy at a car yard. It's so funny. But those people are in a wealth mindset when they're doing those affirmations and therefore money comes to them. Money comes to me easily and effortlessly. Money falls on me like water, like rain. Money is raining down on me. Start saying those affirmations, guys. So sick of hearing tell so sick of people tell me it's not meant for me. I want who I want. All right, exactly, darling. That's the thing with all this this or something better. The universe will decide. That's such hooey, guys. If you love someone, you want them. You don't want someone else. And they loved you, that's why they were with you. They chose you, and then your manifestations appeared because of your negative thinking. They started drifting away from you because of what you were thinking. So all you have to do is change your thinking and they'll drift back. Okay? I've been manifesting and have been seeing a lot of butterflies and angel numbers. Is that good? Darling, you are creating your own manifestations. If you think the butterflies mean it's good, then it's good. If you think angel numbers mean it's good, then it's good. You decide the meaning. So if you're giving good meaning to butterflies, then that means it's good for you. But I can't say that because I don't believe in signs. I don't look for signs. I just live in the end. I've got my thing already in my head. I don't need signs to tell me it's coming because in my head it's already here. Okay, that's the key. It's already here. If you start looking for signs, you're starting to tell your subconscious we're happily married. Then you look for a sign if you're happily married, your subconscious gets confused. It goes, hang on, what? I, now we're looking for butterflies? I thought, oh, we we're married. Oh, God, now we're not married? Okay, we're not married. I'll give you more not married. Your subconscious mind is listening to you all fucking day and taking notes and it just does what you tell it. If you say it's difficult, if you say it's hard, if you say you need science, it will give you that. It is listening all day long. It never turns off. 
So if you want things to come faster, stop looking for signs. But if you feel the signs are helping you and you give it good meaning, then give everything that you're saying good meaning and it will be good. Any more questions, guys? We don't have as many people here as last time. I had 30 people last time. I was here for three hours. Oh, but that's also because it's the time I normally go on. I normally go on at 6 p.m. I've got set times, guys. So 6 p.m. EST on a Sunday, 9 p.m. EST on a Thursday. So normally people hop on because they're my followers and they know about me. Um, but I've only been here three days, uh, three, been live three days. Hi, Paul. What can help to focus more on just a few things, especially my big manifestations? Well, for stop thinking they're big, first of all. Secondly, focus is key. So just focus on it. Focus on it all day long. Whenever you've got a free moment, focus on those affirmations. Focus on those visualizations. When you're on the loo, when you're in the shower, when you're exercising, use your mind, guys. Don't let your mind go idle. That's when you're fucking things up because you're... You're doing affirmations in the morning and everything, and then during the day, your inner conversations are, where is it? Why is this taking so long? This is a big manifestation. It's going to take ages. Your thoughts during the day need to be replaced by those new affirmations, by those new thoughts, okay? Because it's your inner conversations that create your life. That's what Neville calls it, inner conversations. What inner conversations are you having, Paul, all day? Write them down tomorrow. Have a think. Get back to me. And then you'll realize why it's taking long. Hi, guys. Any questions? Any questions? I'm just going to scroll up and see if I missed any. Can you manifest for other people? Absolutely. I manifest for all kinds of people. I manifest for my best friend not being depressed anymore. She actually asked me a couple of months ago. She said, you were manifesting for me, weren't you? You pulled me out of this, didn't you? And I was like, mm-hmm. Because I was sick and tired of her being depressed and I wanted her to be happy. I manifested my ex not being an alcoholic anymore. Well, not in my reality. I don't know what the fuck he does in anyone else's. But in mine, he doesn't drink. Um, I manifest my cat being healthy. I tell her, you're the healthiest, happiest 19-year-old cat anyone's ever seen. And she's so healthy. And she's 19, which is like 200 years old. What, uh, hey, yeah, hi, Paddle Boat 1977. You must be born the same year as me. Any more questions, guys, about manifesting? Or life, or LOA, or law of attraction, or I have a black moon rising. I don't know what that means. I don't know about astrology. All I know is I'm a Virgo and I'm a past life number 22, a four and a 22. So I have no idea what my rising is. I would love for someone to work it out. I don't really read into astrology much, but if you do, you do. Lotto numbers. What do you want me to give you lotto numbers? <laughs> I'm not clairvoyant. <laughs> I have no idea. You'll have to ask a clairvoyant. I'm not a clue. I'm not psychic. Any questions, guys, apart from asking me for lotto numbers? Because I don't know about that shit. Why don't you just manifest that you have more money? You don't need to come from Lotto. Any questions, guys? There's 11 people here. What would you like to know about manifesting? Anything. So I'll just tell you more about what I've learned about manifestation. Most of my stuff I'm talking about on here is based on Law of Assumption, which is based on Neville Goddard's teaching, which is based on Abdullah's teaching. And he also taught Joseph Murphy, who wrote the book, The Power of Positive Thinking. If you want to read that, it's a very good book. Neville's books um, are Feeling is the Secret, He's not talking about feeling. He's talking about feeling it is done, living in the end. Um, he also has a book called The Law and the Promise, Resurrection. He has a lot of books. Some of it bangs on about the Bible, like Resurrection. It might be very hard to take. You might get halfway through it and be like, I can't read this. You can listen to his lectures on YouTube. Okay, There's lots of great YouTubers that talk about Law of Assumption instead of Law of Attraction. That's Amanda at Create Your Future, Caleb at Pluto's Gate, Joseph Ally. He talks about Neville Goddard. That's all he talks about on his channel is explaining Neville. And uh, Sammy Ingram, they're the ones I would recommend. He hasn't seen my story yet and it's been two hours. How do I get him to see it? Darling, I said, stop worrying about the how. He might be stuck in a traffic jam with no reception. Don't worry about it. You're worrying about that thing being the how that he then contacts you because he's seen your snaps. Don't worry about the how, darling. Okay, because that is restricting how it comes about. Don't worry about it. How do you train your subconscious? Okay, it's a great question. Okay, he's going to see it. Yes, he is. Okay, so how do you train your subconscious? Your subconscious mind, let me just get into the subconscious mind here for a second. Your subconscious mind, your ego or your inner voice or whatever it is you want to call it, is there to protect you, okay? And it's based on all the things that you learned from what you saw, what you heard, and what you were taught from the age of zero to seven. That's scientifically apparently where we get our beliefs from. Okay, then after that you form more subconscious thoughts, but the main ones are there. So if you had parents who 
uh, said money doesn't grow on trees, or they argued a lot, or the marriage was terrible, or they abused you, whatever, your subconscious thinking will be based on that, okay? Then, based on that subconscious thinking that you've adapted, your brain's adapted to and is repeating, it will try and jump in every time a situation flares up in your life that is akin to that, and it will try and protect you. All your subconscious and ego is doing is protecting you guys. So if someone's hurting you in a relationship, you feel like you're going to get hurt, your, your amygdala, your fight or flight response in your mind will jump in and try and get you out of that situation so you don't get hurt. It will fight or it will flight. It'll either fight with the person or flight, you will leave. Now, I do leaving and also do fighting. If it's family, I'll do fighting. If it's relationship, I'll leave. I just, I'm one of those, I'll, I'll split up with you in two seconds, okay? Um, because of my amygdala. My amygdala is like, oh my God, you're going to get hurt here. Get out, get out, get out. Screaming at me, get out. And I will just do something without even realizing to get out. Or I'll have a panic attack. I didn't realize until I went to therapy. I have panic attacks when I'm feeling under stress. So literally, don't get angry at your subconscious mind for the negative thoughts you have, guys. It's literally trying to protect you. It's thinking, oh, this is what happened before. Um, we don't want this to happen again. And it will give you the thoughts um, that is protecting you. It's also just on a, a tape. Like someone's got a cassette recorder and it's press play and it's just playing forever. And it's just playing that stuff. So what you need to do now to answer your question is to come up with affirmations against your negative thoughts. Write all your negative thoughts down. Have an uncritical assessment of self, as Neville would say, without beating yourself up of what your negative thoughts are. I'm not good enough. My body is fat. I'm fat and ugly. No one loves me. I get rejected. Relationships don't work out for me. Men cheat. Write down your beliefs, your negative thoughts. Draw a line down the side of the page. Draw the other side. A complete opposite affirmation for each of those. I am perfection. My body is beautiful. Men love me and always commit to me. Whatever is the opposite of what the negative thought is you're having and then use those as your affirmations throughout the day. Don't just affirm on a schedule. Do them when you get the negative thought and the negative thought jumps in. No, he loves me and only me. No, men love me and always commit to me, have always committed to me. Always is a really good thing because it's saying in the past this has always happened. It's like revising with an affirmation, okay? Why would you take time out of your day to try and upset someone? This is worse than sleep torture. Well, darling, why are you joining? Are you a therapist or something? No, darling, I'm not a therapist. I'm just banging on about manifestation and what I learned in therapy because I did an awful lot of therapy. I'm not qualified to do shit. This is the internet. It's a great leveler. I can just talk and if people want to listen, they can. And if you don't, don't, I guess. How long is too long to try and manifest an SP? Darling, if you want someone, you want them. However long it takes is how long it takes you to convince yourself that you're together in your mind, that you're living in the end in your mind. And then it's up to infinite intelligence and things to move to make it so. You don't have control really on the timing, okay? It comes in its own appointed hour. So if you feel like giving up, don't. But if you can't stand it, if the impatience is killing you, go ahead. But I'm telling you right now that giving up is not an option in anything in life. The people who succeed in life are the ones who have enormous self-belief and they do not give up. There's a reason why they keep saying that. And that's the same with your SP. Um, any more questions? Oh, darling, don't worry about them. If they're coming in here bringing hate, that says everything about them, nothing about me. Banging on is the only sensible thing you have said. Well, darling, go away. I'll just um, block you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Guys, we don't need that kind of negativity in our lives, especially on Valentine's Day. Why am I fighting to live when I'm just living to die? Oh, guys, don't say things like that. Okay, if you're feeling suicidal, if you're having bad thoughts, guys, this is the place to be. Ask me your questions, please, darling. DJ Miracle, ask me, tell me how you're feeling at the moment, and I'll try and help if I can. I've been suicidal before. It's not a nice place to be. I think you missed my question. It's a bit up. Oh, sorry, Paul. What is it? Uh, where is your question? I'm becoming an adult and worry about the future. Do you have any tips to deal with this when manifesting? I'm becoming an adult and worry about the future. What do you mean, Paul? You mean like you're worried about because you're turning a, ter turning a certain age, things should be happening for you or what do you mean? You're worrying about the future. Well, worrying about the future is just false evidence appearing real. It's you worrying about something that hasn't even happened yet. Okay, that's how anxiety starts. You start worrying about shit that hasn't even happened. That's worry. 
And then half the time it doesn't even happen, but you've worried about it. You've spent your time worrying about it. Any tips for manifesting better grades? I have a whole video on this. Go to my channel, guys. Go down and put it and look up. And there's a video that says in a black title, manifesting good grades. And it talks about imagining that you absorb um, all, everything you're studying quickly and easily. Imagining how you would feel if you handed in the paper and you knew it was done. You knew you got a good grade. Go and watch that one, darling. Um, my name is Lauren. Well, that's my name too. Um, any questions, guys? Paul, did I answer your question? You haven't really told me what you mean. Just clarify that, darling, about what you mean about being an adult and worrying about the future. Any more questions, guys? Yeah, the manifesting good grades, just like anything else, darling, you've got to live in the end of a student who absorbs information easily, and when you hand in your paper, you imagine you get the grade you want. Okay? Visualize that. Visualize getting the grade back. Oh, straight A's. Any more questions, guys? Oh, there's only 10 people here. There were 30 before. I guess it's too late where you are. JJ Miracle, did you want to talk to me and tell me what's going on, darling, and I'll try and help? If your ex is with someone and happy, how do you not think about it? Okay, I know that's hard, but you've got to realize that you created the situation with your fearful thoughts about them leaving you and being with someone else. Okay, third parties are created by your fear. Okay, so just accept that. I did a video just on this, the second, third last video I just did um, about um, how you create a third party. Go and watch that, darling. And then... After that, you start um, thinking of them with you. Imagine they're not happy with that person anymore. You can start imagining they're not happy with that person anymore. They're miserable, but that won't make them go with you. They'll just make them miserable with them. The better thing to do is forget about the third party altogether. Don't even think about that person that they're with and just imagine that ex-boyfriend or ex-girlfriend of yours with you and only you. Live in the end in your mind that you are now together, happily together. Manifesting pregnancy. Oh, I'd like to do that. Look, I think manifesting pregnancy is all about imagining it is already done, okay? That there's an interesting thing that happens with women who try to conceive via IVF or through adoption. Uh, they try to adopt and the process is so arduous and they get so stressed and as soon as they give up the adoption process, they get pregnant or as soon as they give up the IVF um, process, they get pregnant and it's purely because they they have literally been having fearful thoughts the entire time. I'm never going to get this baby from Thailand. This adoption process is so hard. This IVF isn't working. Why isn't it working? I need this to work. This is my last chance. I need this to work, right? And while they are feeling those fearful thoughts, the thing is they're manifesting because they're literally manifesting what they're thinking, which is this isn't going to happen. Then when they suddenly give up, and some people feel like manifestation comes when you give up, it's not the giving up. It's not the letting go. It's literally you stop the negative thinking about it. You go, oh, well, it wasn't meant to be. And you literally switch off the fearful thoughts you had. And guess what happens? It manifests. It's actually not about the giving up. It's about feeling it is, you're okay whether it happens or not. Or you stop your negative thinking. So get into a place if you want to manifest pregnancy or you feel it is done already. That you are happy already. And then imagine your baby. Not the pregnancy, but imagine after the pregnancy. Imagine you have your child. You live in the end. Imagine holding your baby in the hospital. Imagine showing your partner. Imagine their first birthday. Imagine their third birthday. Imagine their 50th birthday, if you'll still be here then. Okay, live in the end. Visualize a scene where it's their first birthday party and you're bringing out the cake and what that child would look like on their face, okay? Use a visualization or say, I love my baby. Isn't my baby so beautiful? I love to show my baby off. You can make affirmations about your baby, okay? That's what, how I would manifest pregnancy if I wanted to be pregnant. Your ex doesn't have free will. Yes, exactly. They don't, guys. Everyone, I know free will is really controversial, but everyone is based on your assumptions about you, them, and situations in general. Now, if you're new to this and you have come from LOA, you won't understand this necessarily and you think I'm a nut, but just bear with me here. Your subconscious thinking creates your reality. Therefore, what you subconsciously think about you will manifest in the outside world. People reflect back to you your thoughts. So if you think you're not good enough, they'll start to treat you like that. They'll put you down and you'll be down off the pedestal and they'll be up here. It's how this works. When you start building up your self-concept and put yourself on the pedestal, people will start treating you better. That's all manifestation is. It's literally your self-concept, your concept of yourself, out pictures into the world and people will reflect back your thinking, your dominant thoughts. I just think that many things, I just think, hang on, sorry darling, I'll get back to this question. I just think that many things are worthless because life will inevitably come to an end and so why try? Do you honestly think life comes to an end? 
I don't. Um, I have a spirit that lives in this house. It's in my bedroom. Sprays spirit, uh, bloody perfume every night. It drives me crazy. My last house had a lady who still lived there. She used to ring the fucking doorbell in the middle of the night. Ring Big Ben and oh, it used to drive me crazy. She used to let the fire alarm go off in the middle of the night seven or eight times. She didn't want to leave the house. She was 100 years old. It was her house. She lived there her whole life. She loved the place. Okay? You don't go anywhere, darling. It's like water. If I... In physics, the one of the rules of physics is nothing is created nor destroyed. So if nothing is created nor destroyed in matter, then neither are you. So if you think you're, you're, there's no point living because you're just going to die anyway, well, let me give you the tip. You hang around. Because if you're like me and you see spirits sometimes, I feel them. I've seen one, but if you see, you'll realize you don't go anywhere. So I'd hate to tell you, but you may as well have a good life now because you don't go anywhere. <laughs> I'm sorry. You really don't. Okay, so let me explain this with water. If I have a bottle of water and I go and boil this now, it goes from, sorry, if I put it in the freezer, it becomes ice blocks, becomes ice. It's still here. It's in a different form, but it's still here. If I then take those ice blocks, stick them in a pan, start heating them up on a flame, they will start going back to water. Then they'll go to boiling water, then they'll steam. But the steam is still here, even though I can't see it. If I condense that steam down back to water, it's still here. It's always still here. You are always still here. So darling, if you're feeling helpless and you feel like there's no point living because you're just going to die anyway, just remember, only your meat dies, you don't die. Um, I was feeling confident about manifesting my ex-people. Now I feel sad and I feel like crying. Well, darling, have a big cry and then jump back on the horse. You'll be fine. How to avoid doubt and how to detach. It's so hard. You don't need to detach, but avoiding doubt is wise. Okay, so all these people who are telling you to detach, to detach from the outcome, to let go, to allow, it's a load of hooey, guys, okay? You don't need to detach from it. You're always going to want your specific person. You're going to be in love with them no matter what happens. Don't beat yourself up because you can't detach from it. That's ridiculous. What you need to detach from or let go of is the old story about the two of you that isn't helping you. Your old story about you, your old negative thoughts about you. Detach from those, change those, and allow the new story. Detach from the outcome and allow it to come about the way it comes about, the how. Don't worry about the how, but don't detach from wanting it. That is not right. I had IVF and I was so scared of losing my embryos. I was in serious car accident five days later. Oh, see? Oh, God, darling. Okay, so if you ever do it again, just think, try and think as positively as you can while you're doing that IVF, okay? Because your body manifests your emotion, like your thoughts, okay? Like you can make yourself healthy. I tell myself all the time I never get a cold and I never get a cold. Really concentrate on being positive the next time you do that, my sweetheart, and, and that will really help you. What examples of affirmations can you say for getting him back? Okay, so you've got to live in the end in your mind that you're already together, but your affirmations could be such and such, their name. John and I are happily married. John and I are blissfully happily together. John and my relationship has always been wonderful. Our relationship has always been perfect. Always suggest it never stopped. Okay, because you don't want to be thinking that it stopped. You want to live in the end as if it's still happening. You're still with them. Then you change the old story about you, what created the breakup in the first place, and the old story you have about them. If you haven't forgiven them, if you're angry at them, let go of all of that. You created it. Now forgive them. Let it go. Forgive yourself for creating it. Create a whole new story about you. Build your self-concept up and build affirmations about the fact that you two are now together. My ex has no free will, right? Exactly. Successful career as a blogger. Well, imagine your blogs. Imagine people commenting, oh my God, I love your blog so much. I love your blog. I'll tell you how I did my YouTube channel. When I created my comedy YouTube channel many, many years ago, I was learning about Neville Goddard at the time and I didn't know a lot about it, but I was learning about visualization. And somebody on a group said to me, imagine all the comments that you get the day you post your first YouTube. Imagine on your Facebook, all your friends commenting. Oh, Loz, I'm so glad you've started doing this. The next morning I woke up to 99 comments, just comments on this one video. I've never had anything on my Facebook had that many comments in my life. The problem was I imagined the comments, but not them all going over to YouTube. So my YouTube subscribers were so low, but all my friends are watching my videos on my own personal page and not going to my Facebook page and not going to my YouTube. So my subscribers on my Facebook page and my YouTube page is so low, um, but they, they're all commenting and watching them from my personal page. It's so funny. But I called it Don't Be a Psycho. It was about your negative thinking. If you ever go, want to go and watch it, it's still there. But it was years ago I created funny videos about your negative thoughts. Don't be a psycho. Why did you manifest? What did you manifest that worked out? Oh, lots of things, darling. Like this house when I couldn't find a house. My car, my brand new car I got recently on no credit. I totally created it. I see that now. Oh, darling, just me, Lil C. That's, look, 
don't beat yourself up, okay? Because something like that would be so hard to deal with it and you're beating yourself up and kicking yourself. Don't worry about it. Of course, you're going to have fearful thoughts when it's something that really means a lot to you. But now, just think positively about it. If you want to have a baby, assume you have a baby already. Assume you have a child, okay? Live in the end of being a mum. Live in the end of being a mum. Do you believe in twin flames? No, I don't, darling. I don't actually understand um, understand twin flames. Can someone explain to me why that's different from a soulmate or is it different? I believe everyone can be your soulmate, honestly, because everyone's based on your assumptions. My mother has passed. I'm lost. Oh, darling. Leanne, Tracy, I'm so sorry. Listen, if it's any consolation, try and understand that they're still here. I know that's hard, but um, I know that's hard if you can't feel them. But just trust that they are. Still talk to her. She can hear you. Okay, well, if someone's in a coma, they can still hear you. All right? That's like if you go and watch um, lots of mediums, they talk about when the person was in the coma. Then when the person's died and they come back to the medium, they tell them everything the person was saying in a coma. Well, how come they could hear them? And they practically did. So just remember that they're still here. Talk to her all day long. Tell her what you want. Know that she's here. Okay? And try and be comforted by that. They never go anywhere, darling. Your spirit's here when you begin and it's here when you leave it's just your meat that dies you're honestly so nice and sweet and really helped me out with manifesting oh thank you darling i'm most i feel glad that people are happy that, that i'm giving them advice that's helping them how do you know if you should leave a long-term relationship or keep trying to make it work darling don't leave trust me i've done that it doesn't work um look everything that's created in your relationship you're creating with your negative shitty thinking that's been there forever it's actually not about the other person. It's you. You're creating it. You can stay in the relationship and change the person into the version you want so long as you can change the version of you into what you want. You're not actually changing the other person. You're changing you. You're changing what you think they think about you and what you think about you. So stay in the relationship. Know that you're changing them. But most of all, work on your self-concept, darling. Start saying, I am loved. I am wanted. I am more than enough. I am perfection and everyone loves me. Do self-concept affirmation that's build yourself up then with them. Say, he wants me and only me. Our relationship is so harmonious and our communication is beautiful. Okay? Start making affirmations about your relationship and don't react to the 3D. Don't have fights. If they say something and you don't like it, go, uh-huh, okay. And then change it in your mind. No, no, no. He loves me. He loves me and only me. He talks to me so beautifully. He's always so kind. He's so kind and loving with me always. Change it in your mind. Don't react to the 3D because reacting is what causes fights and that's what causes the relationship to go bad, okay? Just realize that you're creating it with your thoughts so you can uncreate it with your new thoughts. How do I change me to change them? Okay, so go to my videos, guys. I've got three affirmation videos with filters going down the front. One is just recently I did it. It's got blue filter and that's I am irreplaceable. I am too important to lose. Do those affirmations over and over and over again. Then there's one about I am a queen and I'm treated like a queen. Do those ones. Then there's another one. I am the most lovable girl in the world. Do that one. Start feeling better about you and literally that person in your life will start reflecting those thoughts back to you. They'll start treating you like a queen. They'll start treating you like you're lovable. They'll start treating you like you're too important to lose because you are changing you, not them. There is no one to change but self. No one to change but self. You can't change the mirror by putting lipstick on the mirror, guys. You've got to put the lipstick on you and the mirror reflects. They are just reflecting your thoughts about yourself. Okay, that's why relationships go bad. It's only your negative thinking that's causing it. Think about when someone's got abandonment issues and then the person doesn't ring them enough or call them enough or spend enough time with them and they cause fights. It's actually not about the other person. It's your deep-seated abandonment issues that's causing you to fight with them about it because that's the thing that validates you in your life. It's all your subconscious thinking, guys. So write down whatever your subconscious negative thoughts are and swap those. Flip those into new affirmations for yourself. Really work on that. I'm new here. Do you? How do you? I manifest things. I've never done it before. Darling, Bet Havis. You're doing it all day long. This is the thing. You guys are going on manifesting channels and people are telling you how to manifest. Guys, you're manifesting everything. All day. All fucking day you're manifesting. The negative shit and the positive shit. You don't realize you're doing it, but you are. You've created your reality, your current reality with your thinking. You think 70,000 thoughts a day. You create your reality with those thoughts. So now start changing your thoughts to positive ones. If you have negative thoughts, swap them. For a positive affirmation, affirm, affirm, affirm. Have visualizations of the new reality you want to be in. Imagine you are that man or woman already and things will start to change. That's what manifestation is. Manifestation is your dominant thoughts create. That's all you need to know. Your dominant thoughts create. 
So what do you need to do to manifest what you want? Change your dominant thoughts to dominant thoughts that serve you. Okay? You're like an older sister. Oh, thank you. How to manifest money. I have an older sister, actually. I have a brother. Um, how to manifest money. I have a video coming up about that. But just guys, just steep yourself in the feeling of being wealthy. You must be in the state. Be in the state of feeling wealthy already. Money comes to me quickly and easily. I, I can afford everything I buy. Go into a shop and imagine you can buy everything in there. Okay, don't feel broke. Broke-ass mentality won't create money. They should teach this in school. Bloody hell, they really should. But darling, they don't want to teach you this shit in school because otherwise you won't go and work for the man. You know, they want to keep you. That's what education's all about. It's trying to kill your imagination. You had a great imagination before you went to school. Do I have children? No, I don't have children. Wish I did. Um, okay, my dad just passed away. Oh, God, darling. All these people, people passing away. Listen, just imagine he's still here. He is. Try and talk to him if you can in your mind and trust that he will hear you. Okay, I know that there's no consolation, but try it. What should I do if I keep affirming for weeks and I still see no results? Darling, it's only been weeks. Don't worry about it. Some people affirm for years. Okay, think of all the famous people who want to be famous and took them 40 years, like Jeffrey Rush. Okay, some things take time. Be patient. Don't look at the outside world and imagine that nothing's happening. Your outside world, guys, let me just explain this to you. Your 3D reality, your personal reality, everyone's got their own personal realities. I'm in my bowling lane, in my reality, you're in yours. It's just a reflection of your old thoughts. So if you had old negative thinking, your 3D reality is just a reflection of that. It's an echo, Neville calls it. It's the echo world. Echo, 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 echo. Hello, 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 hello. It's showing you what you used to think. Now you've got to think new thoughts, so it's got to catch up. So don't get angry at it because it hasn't changed yet. It will, but you've got to be persistent, persist, persist, persist in your new thinking and then it will show up. That's what Neville calls is the key, is persistence. You can't let go. That's why I'm saying let go doesn't work. Persist in your new assumptions and they will manifest, okay? So don't look at the 3D. Don't react to it. Say the 3D doesn't phase me. The 3D does not bother me. Um, they should teach this in school. Yes, I know. Uh, what other... Are you Australian? Yes, I am, darling. I'm in Perth. How do I change my thinking when I'm triggered by something my partner says? Okay, so what your partner is saying is simply a reflection of something you've thought already. So if they say something like, why are you so fucking needy all the time? You will have had a thought at some point of, I need him, or people think I'm needy, or I'm feeling desperate. They're literally reflecting back to you what you've already thought. So just realize that for a start. Whatever they're saying to you is a reflection of something you've already thought. Then you realize you can't get angry. So when you feel triggered, stop. Take a walk outside. Stop and say, I don't want to talk about this right now. I know this is really hard because I've reacted. And fuck me, it really screws things up. I can't really screw things up with my SP by reacting. Because I can't help myself. My fight or flight kicks in and I just go... Bleh! You know, and it's just vomit and it comes out and I'm like, oh man, shut up. You knew better than this. Okay, so if you can, remove yourself from the situation. If you can't, then revise it. Go back in the, your imagination, revise what happened. And what I mean by revise is go back to the scene and change it in your mind. Have a visualization of what happened. Get up to the point where it went awry and change it. To so say you're just about to get in an argument, change it to him saying, baby, let's not talk about this right now. I love you. And you go, okay. All right, and you change what happened, okay? It's revising, revision. Just loop that and loop that and loop that, okay? And then if you react and you can't change and you can't revise, start saying, I can't fuck this up. I'm the queen of my reality. I say what goes and it doesn't matter what I did, he still loves me. I can go cray cry on his ass and he still loves me. Start affirming those things. Um, I'm half Korean and a quarter Australian and a quarter Japanese. Wow! That's a combination. You're in Japan. Konnichiwa, whatever you say. <laughs> I don't speak Japanese, as you can see. Is he coming back? Well, darling, if you decide he is, he is. You create your reality. You create the rules. All right, guys? An argument where we talk about certain things. What if I, what do I do if my partner and I have completely different opinions on things, which always lead to an argument when we talk about certain things? Well, darling, you can't. You're not going to change his opinion, okay? My brother loves Donald Trump. I don't. Well, we're going to get in an argument. So you know what I decided? He doesn't talk about Donald Trump with me anymore. Guess what? Doesn't talk about it. Someone said to me one day, I've unfollowed your brother on Facebook because he does all these um, 
posts about Donald Trump. Guess what? I don't even see them. They don't even pop up anymore. They did. But after I affirmed that, that he no longer talks about Trump in front of me or with me, I don't see the posts. Now, how come I don't see them? He's my brother. He's one of my favorites on Facebook. I don't see his posts. Don't see them. Because I affirmed in my reality, it doesn't happen anymore. So whatever the opinion is he's having, decide, in my reality, we don't talk about this. I don't want to talk about it, so we don't talk about it. He doesn't talk about that anymore with me. Okay? And then don't get triggered by it when it happens. Do you use affirmations for SP leaving their partner or do you use them so the two of you are together? Yeah, so use the affirmations that two of you are together because trying to get the third party to leave them is still focusing on the third party, which is still giving them life, which is still breathing life into them, which is still keeping the bitch alive. Stop keeping the bitch alive, okay? You can affirm against them and just and affirm that they go and find someone new or that your SP is repulsed by them. You can try that. But unfortunately, what you're then doing in your subconscious mind is still thinking about them, still giving them life, and then they'll stay in your reality. Start saying, SP, their name, and I are blissfully, happily together. They want me and only me. Affirm for you and them. Forget about the third party. How do you stop stressing about the future manifestations, dream home, relationships, more money? Okay, so this is what you're asking, Paul. Okay, so first of all, I want you to step into the reality of you are God of your reality, Paul. Okay? You've been watching me for a few days. This is sinking in. Oh, I created everything thus far. That means I can create what I want. Great. Start telling yourself every morning when you get up, I am a master manifester. I know how to do this now. I know how to do this. Because you do. Because you've been listening. So, I am a master manifester. I get everything I fucking want. Tell yourself that every day. I'm the king of my reality and everyone listens to me. Okay? If you start stepping into the feeling of being the master of your reality, you will start realizing you have the power here. I am the operant power. That's what Neville says. You are the operant power and only you can operate this power, you and you alone. So start saying that to yourself. I am the operant power. It does not operate itself. I am the king of my reality. I'm sitting up on my throne and everyone obeys my orders. Paul, start saying that. Start thinking that about yourself every day. Whenever a situation goes awry and it's not going the way you want, say, no, I'm the king of my reality. What I say goes, I run this fucking shit. Start saying that I am a master manifester. I know how to do this now. And it doesn't matter what's happening in the outside world. I run this shit. Okay? Start saying that now about yourself. And then you won't worry so much about the dream home, the relationship, the more money. Because you know you can do it. You've got to step into the being. Being in the state of I am a master at fucking manifesting. Okay? Do that, Paul. Trust me. I feel like the relationship I'm in isn't for me. Is that just my mindset? Yes, darling? You created the relationship. You can uncreate it being shit. Guess what happens? Let me just explain something to you. This is what people do all the time. They marry someone or in a long-term relationship. They start getting shitty with them. They leave. They meet someone new. It's great for a couple of years, a couple of months. And then guess what? Goes to shit again. Then they leave that person. Then they go and find another person. Guess what the problem is? What's the common denominator in all those relationships? You. It's not them, guys. It's your dominant thoughts creating your reality. If you don't change the reality with this person, you'll literally create it with the next person. I'm not kidding. Thank you. I'm trying to pick up on everything you say because I feel I've gotten better already. Wonderful, Paul. Yay! I've got a um, tape coming up, an affirmation video about I am the operant power. What I say goes. You have no free will, okay? Start listening to that one. I'll put it up soon, okay? I have to re-record it because it went funny. Um... I just know there is more to life than being unhappy all the time in my relationship. Will darling change it? You are the operant power. They have no free will. If you want this relationship to be good, change it. Start saying, he loves me. He's always so kind and loving to me. Whatever the thing is that is wrong in your relationship, start affirming against it. He never argues. We all our communicate. No, don't say argue because that's talking about the past. Our communication is beautiful. He only speaks lovingly to me. He's so affectionate and so kind. He's fucking obsessed with me. He loves me so much. Start affirming that, darling, and start watching how he changes. But first of all, you need to work on you. Shitty relationships go shitty. Relationships go shitty because your self-concept. Please change your self-concept. Have you talked to him? Who are you talking about, darling? Cheeky Charlie. Oh, hang on. Is there a question I missed? Let me go back. I feel like the relationship isn't for me, but is that just my mindset? I just know there is more to being unhappy all the time in my relationship. Ah, now, I see what your, your um, advice is here, Dixie Normus. No, talking to them, no work. Okay, let me say something. You create your reality with your thoughts. 
Your dominant thoughts created this reality. It's literally a reflection of your thoughts. So how is talking to them going to change what you created? You can't change things by talking to people, guys. You've got to get this. I tried this with my SP and it spectacularly fucking backfired. I knew better. And I was saying, I want our relationship to go back to the way it was. Why hasn't it? It was my fault that it turned out that way in the first place. With my negative thoughts. Not my fault. You don't want to beat yourself up. But I had created our relationship to deteriorate based on my thinking about his past and his ex-wife and everything. And then I was saying to him, I want it to go back. Well, it wasn't his fault that it changed. He was only reflecting my negative thinking. So talking to them about the relationship will never work. In fact, what it does is makes them pull away further because you're telling them you're doing it wrong. And it'll make them retreat and it will make the relationship go down the fucking toilet. Let me tell you right now. Doing things in your 3D reality, the reality you created, doesn't work. Guys, you've got to do it in your mind. And trust me when I say that when you live in the end in your mind, the new reality you want, it will start reflecting. But you have to be patient. You have to wait. You have to not react to the way the person is acting now because they're catching up to your new assumptions. But doing things in the 3D, having the relationship talk, having the should we break up talk, having the I'm not happy talk doesn't work. Trust me on this, please, because I've done it too many times and it fucking backfires every time. What can I start doing to change how I think? Darling, you need to start working on you. Write down what are all your negative thoughts about you all day long. Write them down. Then the other side of the page, write the opposite. I am more than enough. I am loved. I am lovable. I am perfection. Everyone who loves me, like everyone in my life loves me. Then write affirmations for him. He is so affectionate and loving. Our communication is perfection. We have always had the perfect relationship. Start affirming for him and your relationship and watch it change. But do not, and I repeat, do not have the relationship talk with him. Do not have the I'm not happy talk. Because guess what? If you're not happy, that's up to you. Sorry, SP means specific person. It's just my way of saying man, woman, ex, father-in-law, father, dad, whoever it is that you're having a problem with. It could be a friend, it could be a person, it could be an ex, it could be a man or a woman. I don't know everyone's sexuality, so that's why I keep saying specific person. It's just YouTube speak for person that you're thinking about. Okay, so Cheeky Charlie, did that make sense what I'm saying to you? That doing things in the 3D, even though that, that's lovely advice, darling, that you gave about talking to him, I'm telling you right now, unfortunately, it doesn't work. Psychologists will tell you that. They'll say, sit down with them and tell you your feelings. No! <laughs> no, because you created them to react the way they are to you already. So talking about your feelings isn't going to do shit because you created the way they're acting. You need to understand this, guys. Everything in your reality is based on your assumptions. If you assume you are not good enough, people will start treating you like you're not good enough. If you assume you're lovable, people will start treating you like you're lovable. It's like survival of the fittest. A little runt of the litter assumes they're the runt and they get treated more and more like the runt. Okay? That's how the human race works. Okay? Everything is based on your assumptions of you other people and situations. I was talking before about Beyonce. Her self-concept, her assumption about herself as a pop star is I'm the queen bee, I'm the greatest pop star in the world. Hooray. What's her self-concept about men? Anyone tell me? Men cheat. Why is that? Because her dad cheated on her mum. Because guess what happened to her? It doesn't matter that she's queen bee over here in her career. Her relationship thoughts, her dominant thinking about men was rat shit. And what did Jay-Z do? It was based on her thinking. Okay. So self-concept creates your reality. Yes, it does. Honestly, thank you so much. That's all right, darling. So start writing down your thoughts. Start creating the new relationship in your mind. What do you want this relationship with him to be? Imagine it. Visualize. Do visualizations of you two at your anniversary, having a lovely date together. Manifest, you know, um, visualize him bringing you flowers. Visualize him telling you beautiful things. Visualize this new man you want him to be and he will become it. Trust me. But don't say anything. Any more questions, guys? Otherwise, I'll log off because I was on here for three hours before. <laughs> and I was so exhausted that I had to go and have a little lay down and a little bit of lunch. I'm only coming on again because it's Valentine's Day and I know a lot of people will be struggling today. Okay, so my wife said the last thing I want to do is to hurt you, but it's still on the list. Just kidding. What does that mean? My wife said, the last thing I want to do is hurt you. Oh, thank you, Paul, for the fire. Oh, thank you very much. My wife said, the last thing I want to do is to hurt you, but it's still on the list. What does that mean? <laughs> I'm so confused. Write that again. Oh, you're making a joke. 
Awesome. I'm, I'm glad I found you. I like listening to you. Oh, that's all right, Kylie. You're most welcome. How do you do your washing? Oh, it's in the washing machine. It's dinging. Can you hear it? It's going ding, 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 telling me to... Um, What's secure the bag? I don't know what these little presents you're sending me, Paul. They're fascinating. Thank you. I just stick it in the washing machine. <laughs> hey, how are you and where are you from? Hi, Chris. So I'm in Perth in Western Australia, the only place in the world, I think, at the moment with no COVID. And I was living in London before that and before that, Sydney, but I'm from here. Can you manifest that your ex's new relationship will not last a work? Yes, you can, darling, but... Oh, it was a joke, okay. But you've got to not concentrate on the third party, on the other person, okay, the new relationship. Don't worry about the new relationship. Stop thinking about them. Oh, 29 people here. Hi, guys. So ask me any questions. So if you concentrate on that third party, the other person, you're just giving them life. You're breathing life into them. You're keeping the bitch alive. Stop thinking about them. Start assuming they're with you. You can think, oh, they're repulsed by any other woman. They don't get hard for anyone but me. You can start thinking that if you want, okay, but... I would concentrate on you and them being together in your mind. You are in a happy, loving relationship in your mind and that other person doesn't even fucking exist, okay? That's how to get rid of third parties. Go on my channel, guys, and look for the I am irreplaceable. You are irreplaceable, um, beautiful blue filter over my face, affirmations that I just put up. That's for a third party. I am irreplaceable. I am too important to lose. You lose me, you fucking lose, okay? Start doing those affirmations. I did a whole video on them, okay? Repeat after me. How do you manifest good health or for your health to heal? Okay, so you can say, my body is constantly healed. And my body is healed. My cells are constantly renewing themselves. I am so blissfully happy. I manifest health easily. Okay, start telling your body it's healthy. I've told my body for my hair to go curl, uh, wavy. I've told my skin to be youthful. I tell my cat to be healthy. She's 19. She's the healthy. She's the oldest um, animal in our vet hospital. And every time she comes in, they're all amazed. And I feel like saying, because I'm using my mind, not what you told me. Okay, you can manifest health, guys, by telling yourself you're healthy. Your body runs, your mind runs your body. Your mind runs to, to tells you when to go to the toilet. It tells you when your heart to beat. It tells you when to breathe in and breathe out. Okay, just understand, like people with Alzheimer's forget to breathe. People with Alzheimer's sometimes forget to tell their heart to beat and then they die. Your brain runs your body. So all you need to do now is start telling your brain new thoughts about your body and it will start healing your body. I'm not shitting you. It really works. I'm pretty sure you can't cure disease with thinking. How about that? Let me explain how you can. Okay, I'll give you two examples. Placebos and non-placebos. In all medical trials, they give people a placebo telling them it's the drug and every time the people get healed by the drug because they think it's working, first of all. Secondly, there was a very, very famous um, scientific experiment they did where they had a whole lot of people who needed knee replacements. They took one group and gave them the knee replacement. They took another group, opened up their knee, closed it up again, created a scar but didn't do anything to their knee. Guess who healed? Both groups. Both groups' knees healed. Why is that? Because these people here thought that their knee had been worked on and operated on and they'd had the knee replacement and all they have is a scar on their leg. Look at Louise Hay. Louise Hay cured her cancer. She had a whole career about affirmations about health. So absolutely your mind runs your body. Can I manifest even after one year of no contact? Of course, darling, I've manifested someone after six years of no contact. I'm pretty sure you... Uh, what else? And it, and it tells them you're talking shit. What? What are you talking about? What doco are you talking about? Oh, there's a lot of docos about... Um, positive thinking and, and not positive thinking but like um changing your health with your mind guys can i mess up manifest an ex after year one year of no contact yes i just answered that yes you can any more questions guys i missed a few tell me if i've missed your oh well you're welcome um any more questions <laughs> i told my wife she was drawing her eyebrows too high she looked surprised ah were had no com COVID in Victoria, but now we're stuffed. Well, darling, start affirming that COVID, you're COVID-free in Victoria or just in your reality, you're COVID-free. Don't worry about everyone else. Just affirm that you won't get it, okay? Don't watch the news also. Don't turn on the fear hour. I don't watch the news. I haven't watched the news five years. It hasn't affected my life in any way except it makes me happier. What was the lady's name about her health? She manifested it or something. You just said, oh, Louise Hay, H-A-Y, okay? 
Uh, she's very, very famous. She only died last year, the year before, or maybe a bit longer, but way after she'd had a di cancer diagnosis. She has wonderful, she calls, um, You Can Heal Your Life. That's the name of her book, You Can Heal Your Life. You can listen to the audio tape of it. She's got a lovely, soothing voice, and she does all these affirmations about health. She's helped millions of people around the world with their health. It's called How to Heal Your Life, Louise Hay. Do you support Trump? No, darling, I don't support anybody. Um, I just joined. What's happening? Hi, Taylor Stewart. Okay, so I'm just someone who bangs on about manifestation and um, psychology of the subconscious mind. Okay, I'm not a therapist or anything. I just learned a lot with the mistakes that I made. <laughs> Okay, so if you're into manifestation or you have any manifesting questions or LOA confuses you because it's a load of bullshit, just um, ask your questions. How can I stop my negative thoughts? Okay, Portia, I'll explain. So, all you can do to stop your negative thoughts is to replace them because they're going to run anyway. All your thoughts, you get 70,000 thoughts a day. You just need to replace them with new positive thoughts, okay? So, the first thing is you've got to realize your negative thoughts are just there to protect you. They're not trying to hurt you. They're just trying to protect you from harm. Okay, so don't get angry at them, but you can do this. When you have a negative thought, you say, shut up, shut up, you shut up, and you put in the new thought, or you tell it, thank you for trying to help me, but you're not serving me anymore Could you just go in the corner and eat a cookie. Okay, you tell it off, okay, and then you replace your negative thinking with a new thought. So if your negative thought is, I'm not good enough, you have a new affirmation, it is, I am more than good enough, I am perfection, and any time you think I'm not good enough, you replace it, no, 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 I am good enough, I am more than good enough, I'm fucking perfection, and you start affirming on the spot, when you have those negative thoughts, all right, darling? But don't beat yourself up that you have the negative thoughts. Don't beat yourself up if you're feeling negative, okay? Just try and write affirmations for yourself. Do my affirmation videos on my um, channel, darling. It's got filters over it. I have a lot for building up your self-concept and stopping you from feeling so negative. But start affirming against those negative thoughts as they come up during the day. Have good inner conversations with yourself. How can I connect with my partner more? He's not emotional or loving towards me. What do I change? First of all, you need to change exactly what you just said. He's not emotional or loving towards me. That is your assumption about them. Do you understand? If your thoughts create your reality, your thought about him is he's not emotional, he's not loving towards me. So therefore, he has no choice but to reflect back to you not being loving, to reflect back to you not being emotional because that's what you're thinking about him. Do you understand? You also need to affirm that you are lovable, that people always share their feelings with you, that you are his soft place to land and he always tells you how he feels. Start affirming that he is so loving towards you. He's, he, he does nothing but kindness towards you. He, feels, he shows nothing but kindness to you. He's loving and affectionate with you and he always shares his feelings with you. Okay, start doing those affirmations, darling, things will change. Hey there, how do I stop getting angry out of nowhere 24-7? Well, darling, you need to harness those negative thoughts and change them. Okay, you need to start realizing you're creating your reality with this shit. I, I look, I suffer from depression for an awfully long time. It's very, very difficult when it's your um, dominant thinking. But you've got to start changing those thoughts. Write those angry thoughts down. Write an affirmation that's the complete opposite. And every time you have that angry thought, punch it out with your new positive one. Okay, I've been manifesting for six months, but it's not working. Any tips to make it come faster? Guys, don't worry about the time. You guys are very, very worried about the time. But the more you think it's not coming, the more it's not going to come. If you say it's hard, if you say it's slow, if you say it's not working, you are literally affirming it not working. You're saying to your subconscious mind, this isn't working. And it might be working on it and then it goes, oh, all right, stop working. Guys, everything you're thinking, you're telling your subconscious mind to do. It doesn't know the difference between negative, positive, blah, it just hears what you say and it does it. How can I heal trauma that's stuck in my body and causing me health issues? All right, darling, so any childhood trauma, you can go back and you can revise it. I recommend you look up Neville Goddard Revision on YouTube. Neville Goddard Revision. He talks about the fact that the past is just a memory. It doesn't exist anymore. It's just a memory in your mind and therefore you can go back to the memory and you can change your memory. So the way to do it is to go back to the traumatic event. You don't have to relive it. Just go up to the point before it started and change what happened. So if it was someone coming towards you that were going to harm you, imagine they walk past you. Imagine they hug you. Imagine they say something nice. Imagine someone comes in and takes them away removes them from the situation, okay? Go back to that event and revise it. If that's too traumatic and you don't want to live, relive the trauma and go to even just to the point of it starting, then then say, I have always been loved. Go back to the, like, what you're thinking is that is now generated from that trauma, feeling you're not good enough, feeling you're not loved, feeling you're abandoned, and say, people are always here for me. I have always been loved and I am lovable, okay? Start making affirmations that 
that counter that trauma that you've been feeling, okay, darling, and then it will revise always by saying the word always. You're literally revising the past when you say those words and do it over and over and over again until you feel better, okay? But isn't denying the memories just denying the truth? Well, you make up the truth, guys. So people have different memories. My brother and I have very different memories of our childhood, which, which is true, his or mine. Can you manifest an ex even if you block them and told them to leave you alone? What would you do that for? Unblock them, <laughs> okay? It's very hard for people to contact you guys if you keep blocking everyone. So unblock them. Don't worry about the fact of what you told them to leave you alone. Just assume now that everything is forgiven. They've forgiven you. They're not hurt, okay? They love you and you and only you. They want to be with you and start imagining in your mind that you're together and unblock them, please, if you can. Hello from Dubai. This is awesome. Oh, hello. I love Dubai. Well, I've only ever been in the airport. I think I've been in Dubai airport about 35 times, probably more, 60 times or something. The amount of times I went back and forth to London on Emirates and never, ever, ever saw Dubai. What if they come back again? Well, if they come back, if they, what if they blocked you? What if they come back again? Well, if they come back again, good. Isn't that what you want? If they blocked you, then affirm that they unblock you. Okay? They're constantly calling and texting you. They're constantly calling you. They're constantly contacting you. Is there anything that's not possible to manifest? No, unless you want to like create wings or something in your human being or whatever. Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm very good. Toxic family are not worth your time. Well, darling, if you keep saying they're toxic, they'll still be toxic. Unfortunately, everyone's based on your negative thinking, okay? I'm not saying childhood trauma is caused by you because childhood, things that happened in your childhood was other people's subconscious thoughts projected on you when you're small. But if you keep imagining your family are toxic, they will stay toxic. You can change a narcissist. You can change a toxic person by your thinking about them. Assume they're no longer toxic. Assume exactly how you want them to be and they'll change. I've changed alcoholics, narcissists, depressed people. Trust me, it's your assumptions that create them to be the way they are. One person will be toxic in your reality and someone else's they're not. Well, why is that? They have different thoughts about that person. It's not the person, it's your thinking about them. I remember you said the relationship is linked with the text, so should I focus on one or the other? Darling, both. So assume you are already in the end in your mind in the relationship, but also affirm that they're constantly calling and texting you. Okay, do both. How do you deal with social anxiety, getting a job but can't talk to other people? Okay, so you can start affirming. I feel safe and, and happy when I go out. I love talking to people. I love talking to people. Now, at first, you won't believe it. At first, you'll say, like, no, I don't, but start saying it. You don't have to believe your affirmations, guys, when you first start saying them. You just have to say them. Okay, I love talking to people. I feel safe and secure every time I'm out and about. I feel safe and secure. I always feel safe. Everyone loves me. Everyone loves talking to me. Okay, start affirming the opposite of how you're feeling. All right, darling? And start visualizing moments where you feel safe talking to people. The at the workplace and you feel safe and content talking to people. Visualize a scene. How do I connect to him when he says he... How do I connect to him when he says he brought up like his dad to not show emotion or be affectionate? Well, okay, so sometimes people will say shit and you'll believe it because they said it. But what you've got to realize is if someone's saying to you, I'm brought, I'm, I was brought up like this, that's why I'm this, you can choose whether or not to believe that or not. Okay, but somewhere, just investigate. If you ever thought that he might be unaffectionate and therefore he reflected that in what he then said, okay? You might have thought he's not emotional and therefore then he said to you, oh, I'm not emotional because my dad wasn't emotional. Somewhere you had the thought first and then they outpicture it. Everything's you first. Everyone outpictures your thought that you had first. You've got to really investigate that, what you were thinking, and then change those thoughts about him. No, 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 he's affectionate. He's so emotional. I'm his soft place to land. He loves talking to me. He's, he's emotional. He's, he, he loves talking about his feelings, okay? Affirm the opposite. When he says he loves me but he's stuck with the third party, what do I affirm? Well, affirm he loves you and only you and he had, doesn't have eyes for anyone else. He can only get hard for you. He only thinks of you. He only fantasizes about you. He only wants to have sex with you. He wants you and no one but you. Thank you so much. You're welcome, darling. What does it mean when you constantly see this person in LOA? What do you mean? What do you mean when you constantly see this person in Law of Attraction? What do you mean, darling? I don't understand the question. Um, any more questions? Any more questions, guys? I'm trying to find some that I've missed. How do we forgive ourselves for the things we manifested that we didn't like? Oh, look, Gina, it's hard. I know. You've just got to. 
I've got a new course coming up, about 13 videos called How to Manifest an Apology. Watch it because it's really about how to forgive yourself for the shit you created. It's not beating yourself up. It's not, it's not hating on yourself for, oh my God, I can't believe I did this shit. God, I'm an idiot. Like, it's not that. It's just, wow, did I do that? Jesus. Okay, I'll stop. Okay, it's just about moving on from what you used to do to now the new reality where you don't do that anymore. Okay, watch that course because it will be really helpful for not beating yourself up for what you've already created. But start realizing, okay, accept it. Acceptance is key. I accept that I created my reality. Now I'm changing it. Great. There's no point beating yourself up, darling, for what you did. Now you're just going to change it. No, I created this. Oh, look, I created this. If I created it, then I can uncreate it. I can recreate it. Start telling yourself that, okay? Oh, God, nine new messages. Hang on. I mean law of attraction, yes, but what was the question? Um, the name I mean. Oh, thank you. I just want to say you're an amazing person, also very gorgeous. Oh, thank you so much. I just, I just unblocked. Oh, fabulous. Well done, darling. I constantly see this person's name. Okay, well, you can manifest names, darling. You can manifest signs and names and seeing a person's name. That's just you manifesting it. Give it good meaning if you want to. If family is verbally abusive each time you see them, should you continue to see them? Look, you can remove yourself from a situation if you feel like you need a boundary. Put that boundary up and then start in your mind affirming the opposite. Start affirming that your family always speak to you beautifully, that everyone in your family is kind and speaks only words, words of love and kindness. Okay, start affirming that. Remove yourself from the situation if it makes you feel better. Okay, and then start seeing each individual person in that family differently. They are kind. They are loving. They always say sweet things to me. But the most important thing, darling, is you have to start working on you, Mel, not the people. People treat you how you feel about you. If you start feeling like a person who gets abused, if you start feeling, if you feel inside deep down that you're not good enough, people treat you like that. You need to start building up your self-concept, darling, and everyone will treat you accordingly. Just Not just your family, everyone, the Uber driver, the waitresses, your co-workers, your spouse, they'll all start treating you the way you feel about you. Go to my channel. Start watching the videos, the affirmation videos, the ones with the filters, the blue one, the one with the heart, everything, and start saying lovely self-concept affirmations about yourself. I am beautiful. I was wonderfully made. I am perfect just the way I am. Everyone loves me just the way I am. I'm a queen, and everyone treats me like a queen. I'm treated with respect and love by everyone in my life. Okay? Build yourself up. I am more than good enough. I am perfection. Okay? Really start working on you, darling, with those affirmations. You've got to change you before anyone can treat you differently. That family is treating you that way because of the way you feel about you. Now, I'm not saying that's your fault. I'm saying something happened in your childhood and throughout your life that's given you these thoughts of not feeling good enough, not feeling really respected, feeling like you deserve verbal abuse, feeling like you're below everybody. You need to start putting yourself up on the pedestal so people will treat you better. Okay? I have a question. Do people have personalities or do we manifest them? Well, look, people come with their own personality, of course, but the way they treat you is based on your assumptions. This might sound stupid. No, nothing stupid, darling. This might sound stupid, but do I need to do anything or just affirm and believe? No, 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 don't do anything. Guys, you don't have to do anything in the 3D to manifest your thing coming about. My SP turned up at some fucking house. People telling you you have to ring them first or you have to burn candles or incense or shit to get your manifestation don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Sorry if I'm repeating myself. I've given up on this person, yet everything reminds me of them. Well, darling, don't give up on them. If you love them, you don't have to give up on them. That's what I'm talking about. Just remember, guys, if someone's in your life and they're with you and they're your boyfriend and then they leave, they loved you. They were with you. They wanted you. And something happened that caused the situation to manifest where you separated. Just remember, you're never separate. Everyone's in you. We are all one. Talk to them as if they're still with you. Imagine they're still with you. If you want them back, you can have them back. Okay, you can have anything you, you can be, do and have anything you want so long as it's within the golden rule. Okay, you're not harming anyone, you can have it. I love you. Oh, thank you, darling. I love this, you're really amazing. Thank you so much. Oh, guys, you're really welcome. Make a Zoom call so we can all join. <laughs> That's a good idea. And then you get, What happens in Zoom calls? Do you guys talk back in Zoom calls? Is that what happens? That's a good idea. Maybe I should do Zoom... Um, Things on my Facebook page. Guys, go to my Manifest Live with Loz Facebook. It's in the link on my page. Join it and I might start doing Zooms. That's a really good idea. I've never done a Zoom in my whole life. I don't even know how they work. Do people talk back? Is that what happens? Maybe we'll do a Zoom. 
This might sound stupid. No, nothing stupid. Do you believe in angel numbers? No, 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 darling, I don't because I'll tell you what angel numbers are. Your reticular activating system is a part of your brain because it can't it can't take in every bit of information you're seeing all day. So I'm looking right now outside my window. I can see a pot plant, a chair, an umbrella. The trees are moving. I can see my sprinklers. I can see the cat's bowl. I can see it's too much information for my mind. So what your mind does so it doesn't take in everything all at once, it filters out only important information. This is why people with Alzheimer's start losing um, short-term memory because it, their filter starts dying and they lose the short-term memory. My mum can't remember to go to the toilet at the moment she has Alzheimer's because she doesn't tell her brain to go to the toilet anymore. The short-term memory has gone. Okay, but I'm, I'm, exaggerating. I'm going off topic. But your reticular activating system filters out information and only retains the thing it finds important. So if you start deciding that 11.11 is important to you, your brain will start going, oh, okay, you want to see 11.11? And it will start filtering out every other number you see and you'll start noticing 11.11. That is what 11.11 angel numbers is. It's your reticular activating system noticing it, filtering out all other numbers and you're noticing that. Then if you give it meaning that it means your manifestation coming is coming, that's you giving the angel number meaning. Do you understand? That's what an angel number is. Do you believe in soulmates? No, I actually believe that anyone can be your soulmate, guys, because everyone's based on your assumptions. So if you assume that person's your soulmate, they are. If you person assume that person's your soulmate, they are. That's what I think anyway. Can the universe guide you towards someone? No, the universe isn't doing shit. So let me just explain, because a lot of you will have come from the LOA universe, the universe will provide, the universe has your back, hoo-ha, hooey, bullshit world, Okay. The universe is literally atmosphere. What is that doing for you? Absolutely nothing. Think about this logically and you'll understand. Neville talks about when you have lived in the end in your mind, the world will conspire to conform to make it so. Meaning people. People will conform to make that thing true. Space, atmosphere, the universe isn't actually doing anything. The people in your 3D reality start moving to make it so. Okay, it's people moving to conform. When I wanted to go to drama school and I kept saying, I am an IDA student and I auditioned and I did the audition, did the callback and then thought I got in and they rang me and said they hadn't accepted me. I kept saying, well, I'm an IDA student in my mind. Oh, but I'm an IDA student. I was convinced of that end. That was my reality. In my mind, I was a fucking NIDA student. I was going to that school. Two and a half weeks later, someone moved to make it so. A girl had the idea. Hmm, I got accepted to NIDA, but actually I don't want to go there. I want to go to the school in WA where they do musical theatre. I'm going to say I don't want the place. She dropped out and I got in. She moved to make it so. Okay? It's not the universe doing things, guys. It's people. Okay? Do you believe, um, wow, the brain is, that's true, makes so much more sense, the attitude, I'm dying. No, 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 sorry, I, I'm sorry about the way I talk, guys, I do swear a lot, but I'm Australian, forgive me. <laughs> doesn't matter how long people have been disconnected in no contact, no, darling, it doesn't. I manifested my SP, my ex back, we hadn't talked for six years. Well, I blocked him on social media, everything, I unblocked him once, he friended me again, I was like, oh, I've, I've accepted his friend request, never said anything to him, came back to Australia, saw that he had a baby, and I said on his Instagram, oh, congratulations, and then next minute we we're back together. Okay, so it doesn't matter. Time doesn't matter, or distance. Any more questions, guys? Otherwise, I'll log off. It makes me more comfortable, to be honest. What makes you more comfortable, darling? Oh, my swearing. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Any questions, guys? Oh, 25 people here. Hi again, you're still on. I came back. People wanted me to come back because it's Valentine's Day and people are feeling a bit down on Valentine's Day, so I thought I'd come back today, okay? How do you manifest? Oh, guys, that's a fucking long answer. Go to my videos, okay? Go to the video series called How to Manifest Properly. It's in a big black heading. It's about 15 videos. Go from the bottom up. Watch them all. I explain this in great detail. How do you react to a family member who is rude to you? Okay, well, first of all, you're assuming they're rude, so stop assuming that. Secondly, start imagining that they're no longer rude, that they're always kind and loving towards you and they always say kind things. And then don't react when they don't do that. Just know you're changing them and when they're rude to you, go, hmm, okay. And don't fight with them. Don't react. Take yourself away from the situation if you need to so you don't react, but don't react and know you're changing them, okay? You seem very knowledgeable on the subject. Oh, darling, it's just years and years and years and years of me fucking my life up. 
<laughs> and having to figure it out. Um, oh, thank you, darling. Oh, thank you for the present. Thank you so much. I'm definitely going to binge watch all your videos. Oh, thank you, darling. I'm actually going to bring some courses out that go more into depth about um, manifesting your ex back. I'm going to bring out a long course that I'm going to put on my YouTube page. Uh, my, not YouTube, I don't have a YouTube. On my um, Facebook page, I'm going to start saving these lives, guys, if I can figure out how to download them. But save the lives to the Facebook page so you can watch them back because there's a lot of good information in these. I mean, the one I did this morning went for three freaking hours. Um, and yesterday's went for two hours and 20 minutes because I just couldn't log off and I was dying to go to the loo, but I stayed on. I keep drinking this water. I'll have to go to the loo in a minute. Um, five more messages. Can you do a YouTube? Look, um, <laughs> good guys, if you want one-to-one -one coaching, people have asked me for coaching. If you want some um, coaching, video coaching, just DM me, not about um, your old story or anything. I can't answer questions in DMs, but if you want coaching, just DM me and we'll organize it. I do video coaching like this. People have asked me for it, so I've started um, saying I'll do it. I haven't started yet, but I will start. Okay, so it'd be paid video coaching for half an hour or an hour, all right? I always come back to your videos when I'm thinking the opposite. Thank you. Oh, that's all right, darling, Jessie. Uh, where can we access if we don't have Facebook? Oh, we'll join Facebook then. <laughs> I don't know. I've only joined, I've done a Facebook group. The reason why I'm not going to do a YouTube is this, okay, um, is because I do watch a lot of fantastic YouTubers on Law of Assumption. I'll give you their names. Sammy Ingram. Pluto's Gate is Kayla, but Pluto's Gate and Create Your Future is Amanda with her wonderful coaches. And they have excellent information about Law of Assumption. And also Joseph Ally talks about Neville Goddard. And if you want to listen to Neville Goddard, you can listen to his lectures, but you can also go to Neville Lucian, Neville Ushin, a lady called Lila. She um, actually reads his lectures. Okay, so if you want to listen to those. That's the reason I'm not going to do a YouTube because I actually don't want to shit on um, those other people that I've learned from. I don't want to take away their audience. And I just, I don't, I think TikTok, there's a lot of misinformation on here. I'd rather just stay on TikTok for the moment and just put the longer videos on my Facebook page. And then um, I'll put some courses together and stuff, guys, if you want to. And Zoom calls. Maybe we'll do a Zoom call. I'll have to look into how to do that. Someone suggested that. You deserve to be TikTok famous. Oh, thank you, Paul. I only joined two weeks ago. Let's all affirm that that happens. <laughs> so doesn't it matter who or what has happened between no contact? No, darling, it doesn't matter. The past is history. Forget about the past, okay? It's dead. It doesn't exist anymore. Don't worry about what happened in the past. Don't worry about... Think about the people who get back together after 50 years. They married someone else, they had children, and then they, they meet their childhood sweetheart and get back together again. No contact doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what happened, okay? You can revise the past if you want. Go back in the past and revise the shitty things that happened. Pretend they didn't happen. Change the scene. Go into the future with a new scene as if it never happened, okay? What's the strongest love manifestation method? Darling, imagine that you're together already, that you and that person are already madly in love and you're in a couple already. That's the strongest. What is something that you see often? What, do you, what is something that you see is often told to people on TikTok about manifestation, manifestation but is false? That you need to be happy to manifest that you need to feel joy to have manifest. That is bullshit, guys. Bullshit. I'll give you an example. A couple of weeks ago, I was closing the door of my house and I lock it from the inside and I only have one set of keys at the moment because I've moved in. And as I closed the door, I thought to myself, shit, I better not do that because one day I'm going to lock myself in by locking it from the inside and leave my keys inside. Guess what I did that afternoon? Lock myself in. I literally manifested locking myself in the house from thinking it that morning. Your negative thoughts create just as strongly as your positive ones. So please don't believe all this complete bullshit on here about the emotion meter. And you need to be positive to manifest. Just understand this, guys, about most of the people on here on TikTok. This is what I've noticed. And I'm not being critical, but I am. Okay, I came on TikTok and I was just going to do affirmation videos. And I noticed a lot of people are doing stuff about manifestation. And they're talking about the law of assumption, uh, law of attraction, and the secret, and Abraham Hicks, and the 17 seconds, and 369, and they're talking the water, and blah. What they're doing is, if you go down to their page, look at their original videos. They just had accounts talking about fitness. Or they had accounts talking about themselves or what they're wearing, and it didn't work. So they thought, what works? Oh, what's popular? Oh, look, affirmations is a trending topic. Oh, oh, affirmations 2021 is trending. I'm going to do affirmations. I'm going to do manifestation. So they turn their account, and I know I'm being really cynical here, guys, but I've seen it. They've turned their account from a, just a normal account to a manifestation account. They are copying the videos from the main accounts who are talking about LOA. They're then repeating that shit. 
because TikTok's a lot of it is re repetition. I don't have a lot of followers, guys, so I'm not repeating what everyone else is saying. If I was just repeating the stuff about water manifestation and talking to angel numbers, talking to fucking water, I probably have more followers because I'm not repeating what everyone else is saying. Then they're creating accounts based on the repetitious stuff they're listening to. They don't understand it, but you're listening to it and they're creating accounts about that. I've gone on a few accounts and questioned them and they haven't been able to answer my question, which means they don't understand this shit. They're literally just regurgitating what is popular. So please, unless you think this person actually understands what they're talking about, don't listen to them. They're talking about changing your life, guys. They're talking about creating your life. They're not talking about knitting. They're not talking about creating an origami dragon. They're talking about creating a life. They shouldn't be talking about shit they don't understand. I'm glad I stumbled on your account. Oh, you're welcome, George. How about if you're manifesting and you close your eyes to imagine but only see negativity? Well, darling, just start imagining and imagining until you feel better, okay? Really soak your mind in the new positive thinking. It takes a bit of time. Sometimes if you've got negative thoughts to jump in, just try and replace them. Try and replace them. Knock them out. Shut up, bitch. I don't need you anymore. You're not helping me. This takes a process, guys, if you've got some real negative thinking, okay? Put those affirmations in. Have the nice visualizations. If the visualization comes in, something bad comes in, stop. Start again. What about appearance? How do you manifest a glow up? Oh, darling, I do that all the time. I stand in the mirror and I say, I love my wavy, voluminous hair. My hair's gone wavy. Well, not today. But my hair went wavy in the last three weeks because I started telling my hair to go wavy and it does. I keep having doubts when I manifest. What do I do in this situation? Darling, doubt is the devil. Neville Goddard. I'll show you him. This is his collection of his books, guys. Neville Goddard. Neville, okay? The Neville Reader. His books are called Feeling is the Secret, Resurrection, Freedom for All. They're all on the internet. A lot of them, he hasn't read them out loud because he's dead now. Okay, but um, not that he believed in death. He believes his spirit and he's still here. He asked them not for a funeral, but they still gave him one. Um, he talks about... Doubt being the devil, literal devil. If you doubt, you will shit on your manifestation. So as soon as you doubt it, darling, start looking at your life. What have I created already? Oh, look at all this shit I created. Oh, my God, I'm a fucking master manifester. Look at all the stuff I manifested already. I am motherfucking powerful. Start reminding yourself every day of the shit you created already so that you know that the shit you're creating now is easy because you did all the other stuff. Any more questions, guys? Otherwise, I'll log off. I've been on here for another hour. God, I was on here for three hours and th Jesus. I think I came on here at 11 something and it's 12.59 here. Christ. Any more questions, guys? Okay, I'm going to log off, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Please go to my page and follow me because I go live randomly every day. So you'll be notified when I go live and you can ask me questions live. Please also join my um, Facebook group. The link is there and I'll start adding these lives to it. All right, guys, if you have any questions when I'm not live, just post them underneath the videos as a comment and I'll try and comment back with a video. You're welcome, guys. Have a lovely day. Have a lovely Valentine's Day if it is still Valentine's where you are. And just remember, if you're trying to manifest a specific person, just have faith, guys, in yourself. Bye, guys.